Good morning, my name is Yechiel Kimchi and I will try to convince you that uh, C++ can be taught and maybe better be taught as the first language. Yes, okay. Um, okay, a first programming language depends on what your audience is. I mean, evidently. And uh, what I'm talking is about computer science, software engineering students. And this is a, a two course description, but generally speaking, this is okay. We want to know how the computer works. Although the next slide will show that we, are, we do not teach programming, actually. We teach much more. So traditionally, it is done with C. And uh, I will tell you about my experience. In other disciplines, I mean, it can be MATLAB. This is taught at the Technion for non-computer, uh, no pr non-programming uh, uh, faculties, and also C and others. And uh, actually, I was asked when uh, the Technion uh, tried to move from Pascal to C, I, I was asked what, is, what was my opinion about the first programming language. And I said, first month, basic, just to learn what a variable is, what is if, and things like that. And it was 20 years ago today. It goes with a, with a tune. Um, I was asked to teach C++ as first language at, the, at Haifa University. And they said that um, it is now taught as C++, but it is C with C in and C out. And they didn't really like it. The next semester was C++, and they asked me to teach computer science, basic programming. So first of all, to give the credit for the line, and, uh, and what we really teach, both at the Technion and I believe at the university and other places, is teaching how to solve problems by programming the computer. This is the goal. So uh, it goes. Uh, about the four, basically concentrates on four uh, parts of what is development, software development, which is uh, understand the problem, uh, design or algorithms. I mean, design is more like objects, but it's kind of design. Coding and testing, no maintenance, but this is the four stages of software development. So traditionally, it is done in C, but uh, I was asked to do it in C++. And my re reaction, my first reaction, oh, this is impossible, too difficult. But luckily, they approached me at the beginning of summer, and I had to teach only at the end of the summer, so I had two months to think about it. And it was 1998, actually 21 years ago. So STL was not a available really for using it as teaching. So traditionally done in C, this is the same thing, but uh, I want to teach it in C++. So I thought and thought and thought, and some idea came. And the idea was to uh, skip teaching classes. The idea is, um, well, we don't build cars before we know how to drive, right? I mean, if I ask someone to build a car and he does not have driver license, I don't know, maybe we come out with a camel. You know what a camel is? It's a horse designed by a, by a, uh, a, committee. a, a committee, exactly. Okay, oops. So um, this is uh, what I want. I want to teach them how to use classes. This is the first thing. And I came out with an acronym, but this is really new, what OOPS means. OOPS means object-oriented programming suppressed. But uh, it's not really, because you will see that without classes, I really teach object-oriented programming, although you may uh, differ or you think that I'm wrong. Um, so I will teach everything I used to teach in s using C but the C++ way. So the question is, what is the C++ way? 
So first of all, everything is an object. I believe in words. I believe that anything you cannot name, you cannot really think about. And also I believe, and this is the problem of teaching C at the beginning, if you want to go to C++, is that what you learn at age five, it's very hard to disengage from. So start by speaking object orientes, let's call it this way. So an int is an object. And it has properties and capabilities depending on the types. And first of all, things, I mean, objects are created, initialized, used, and destroyed. So this is how they are initialized. I don't use the equal. OK. And first lecture. First lecture is something like this. Describe what a computer is. I go to cache. I even mention what cache is and the need for cache. And then I present a problem. Sum, get 100 numbers, and give me the, the sum. So I do it in a, gradually. I ask what to do, etc. Calculator, all kind of options. And I say computer. And then I write pseudo assembler as the solution. I start with wrong solution. And then I translate it to C. This is what happens when I teach C. So I translate it to C++. And this is the body of main. So you see initialization. And if I used C99, I would have used this type of four. And always. I use a variable that belongs to the internal, uh, internal block. And always I'm asked by students who know programming, why don't you put num outside? And I say, well, if I write here by mistake num, then the compiler will notice the logical error. So I actually I change a logical error into syntax error. And then they say, well, and what about performance? It creates the element every time. I say, don't worry. If this is your compiler, replace it. OK, so we have actually three levels of uh, scope here. And now we continue what I teach in, in the class. So. Uh, Input is always, by the way, all good practices that are available in C, I use in C also. So it, I didn't have to reinvent many things. Input is always tested. This is how I use input. So first of all, while C in really uh, puts something into num, and we check EOF, EOF, not at second lecture, but at third. And when it fails, we clear because in C, even if it fail, if, if it fails, you can still continue working with it, um, but not in C++. Luckily, in some sense, this is better. And I use yes. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Kol zman shelo hoshvim. Slicha sheyesh li sakit. אה, אוקיי. זה בסדר גמור, ללמוד מהניסיון. זה מה שאני אומר לבן שלי, כשהוא עושה משהו, זה, אני אומר לו, אל תת, תיכנס ללחץ בגלל מה שהיה, תחשוב איך אפשר לתקן לעתיד. וגם לא כל תקלה זה אסון. אוקיי, uh, okay. using const, מההתחלה. אוקיי, okay. אז הנה, ושלשום דיברו על... אינגליש, נו, או, יס. Uh, <laughs> sorry, my, my mother tongue. Um, okay, so uh, two days ago it was West Const and the East Const, and actually uh, East Const is better, but you see it only when you use pointers. Uh, so uh, 
this is how we use it. And we go on. Now, the single responsibility principle. It appears very early, even before functions. And uh, this is, uh, but when we have arrays actually, so read an array and sum an array. And when I'm asked why don't you do it in the same loop, I say we'll see it when we use uh, functions. And uh, so we use functions. Single responsibility principle, now we have this. So again, we didn't have, I didn't have practically, at that time I didn't have STL, so I did use arrays. Uh, and now I ask why it is better to do it separately. And it's not about, uh, it's not about, um, uh, it's not about single responsibility, it's about practicality. I mean, single responsibility has uh, practical gains. You almost never use an, an array to read and to sum together. Usually you either read it or sum it up, sum its elements up. So this is for reuse, reusage. And also testing is easier because if you have two loops in a function and you test the function, you don't know it could have failed at the first loop or the second one or the communication between the two loops. And, but uh, of course, uh, right at the point where we use pointers in C, I used reference, of course, for swap a reference. And if I had STL, I would have used this to, to point it. And this is just kind of, uh, I don't know how to call it, side effect of C that this works like this. And uh, so we use references uh, before pointers. Uh, now, it is still what is C++, the C++ way? Uh, function overloading. Once we have functions, why not doing this? And I don't remember, yes. And I say the objects choose the appropriate function. This is how we use it. This is wrong. It's not true that the object choose the function. But this can be perceived as if, and as if is an official term of the standard, right? Uh, and of course, if you use this, the compiler complains. You cannot mix them. You cannot mix int and double. You have to do casting, but we still don't have casting. And the C++, actually the uh, machinery of casting in C++ was built to deter uh, to deter programmers from using casting, okay? Now, uh, once we have function overloading, why do we have to write the code again and again? Function templates at first, at, uh, uh, at, first, um, at first semester. So we have template for swap and it is important to have reference here, although we swap ints, etc., uh, uh, because we may have big objects. Again, STL I didn't have, but if I wanted to swap two vectors, this becomes really uh, crucial. So the reference is used. And, uh, and now, I can overcome in a simple, in a, in a, a simple way uh, the, the problem of non-matching types because I can force which version to use. So we did all this. And now more of that. Uh, 
Then I have introduced arrays and, uh, and uh, after functions. So we use arrays uh, for uh, doing that. And then we teach, I teach, I taught pointers because I had to explain how it works. And we did some things, but pointers were not uh, the main issue. And we saw before that that it can be done without pointers, at least in some places. And had I, have, uh, had I had a STL at that time, <coughs> I would have used algorithms. And, uh, and uh, we didn't use iterators. We used uh, pointers as iterators. And what else? Yeah. This is uh, coming almost to your question, to the questions part. There are good, re good reasons for not using C++. There are good reasons for not teaching C++. And, but, not end, but the only reasons I know for the above two are the following three. For using C++, if, there are no, if you don't have qualified programmers. I mean, this is a good reason. Someone says we use C, uh, C because our programmers don't know C++ well enough. Uh, I mentioned yesterday, okay, in C++, the programmer can shoot, a, it's harder for the programmer to shoot oneself in the foot, but when they succeed, they blow the whole leg off. Uh, not teaching C++ if you don't have qualified teachers because most cases that people come to me uh, with prior knowledge, I don't know how they get, got it, but it shows some basic misunderstanding of concepts of C++ or C for, by the same token. And Sometimes you don't have good compiler. I mean, I heard uh, that at least at some time, embedded systems did not have good uh, C++ com uh, compilers, so it's a good reason not to use it. But now I think they are much better. Uh, more on uh, there are, yeah, it's important to emphasize the fake shortcomings of C++. C++ is slower than C. Well, logically, it's impossible. This should uh, represent a face like this. Okay, why? Um, why this is not true? Because you can write C, you write C++, and when you have, whenever you have a slow uh, operation, you translate it to C and do it. So logically, it's impossible. But this is actually uh, wrong. Bjarnes Taustrup wrote learning standard C++ as new language and he shows there that the core of sort, STD sort, is eight times faster than Q sort. Because Q sort uses pointer to functions and sort as a template uses function object that can be inlined. The strong typing of C++ allows more opportunities for inlining functions and other optimization also. C++ is more difficult than C is, uh, well, first of all, riding a motorcycle is more difficult than riding a bike, right? So you have to pay something, but if it is done right, I try to show a way to do that, it's not that difficult and um, this is Bjorne Straustrup's um, advice, if I remember correctly from his design and de development of C++. He says, you don't have to know all C++. I don't, I admit. Okay? Uh, all you have to know is what you need and where to look for when you need something more. This is what you need. So this is a compact uh, interpretation. It's not a quotation of Bjorn Strastrup. I think that he was once uh, asked uh, how much he knows C++ and he said about seven. 
How, how am I? I'm sorry? Oh, okay. yes, maybe. Yeah. 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 I, I don't. Uh, this is to teach us uh, modesty. Yes. I, I'm not afraid to tell my students. I mention names of people who they should trust because I have a page of about bad books. So I mention uh, Andrea Alexandrescu and Scott Myers and Herb Sutter as people that may maybe know better than Bjorn Straustrup, the C++. And, uh, but he is also, and uh, this is about it. Oh, example about the fake news. Uh, in industrial uh, environment, I was working there, I saw part, it was C++ everything, but there was a module that do something like al algebraic expression written in the C way. C way means arrays, enums, and uh, switches. And I had the chance to translate it to C++ using inheritance, extensive use of virtual functions, and it ran 30% faster. Just by writing C++ the right way. Okay? So this is about C and C++. And uh, thank you. <laughs> question. Yeah. I have a question. I liked a lot of the things you said. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. you. put a lot of effort into thinking how the text C and C should end up articulating the programming way. I'm asking if it's not a problem when the students see it as a first language in their minds, like you said, it's hard to think of something that we learned when we were five. So now they've learned that the way, the right way to implement uh, a language or the right way, right, right way to program is to do it in an object-oriented way. Mm -hmm. That's what they've learned from you. So the question is later when they when they meet other languages that are not object-oriented, um, how 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 is that like? How do how, how do they find it? Um, I don't have a good answer. Uh, I will say that uh, <coughs> although knowledge is parallel or concurrent, uh, um, learning, speaking, many things are, are sequential. So there will always be a first language and then you have to switch. I've learned Lisp. I don't remember much. <laughs> but. Uh, but I know there are, are different ways to do that. So I expect them uh, to, um, to be able to adapt. Also, what I mentioned uh, yesterday, actually, I said my lectures are an introduction for reading good books. I mean, I explain how C++ think or uh, how it is better to think <coughs> in C++. But there are other disciplines, and uh, it's not contradiction, except that I cannot uh, uh, do that. If I had the chance to do a lot of templates, this is part or is like functional programming, but this is different. Yes? Some questions. Uh, regarding NIS, you mentioned, if I will quote them, then you have to use D and not C++ in order to teach, because they have a lot of shortcomings in the language that they mentioned. Regarding teaching, why is it important to deal with the performance? I mean, if it's quick or if it's faster or it's mm -hmm. doesn't matter at all. I mean, at, uh, at, the, at the first course, it, they don't care what's going behind the scene. Okay, yes. And that's one. And also, if everything is object, small talk seems even better. Okay, okay. Um, first of all, the audience. We want the students to understand how the computer works. So this is why C and C++ that are closer to the, to the metal uh, is chosen. I, I agree, it's not the best language for object-oriented programming, C++. Um, but um, I don't deal much about performance in the first semester. In the second, I do. and. Uh, uh, the first thing I say about performance is that no programmer knows how, uh, wh where is the best 
or more important uh, place to optimize to uh, the, the program. Use profilers. I mean, so I, I don't uh, try. Now about D, I agree, but it's not that common. Actually, I asked once Andrei Alexandrescu, I asked him, would you say that D is the small language that is hidden inside C++ and wants to come out? Because Straustrup says once, said once he believes uh, there, uh, there is a small language inside C++ that wants to emerge and come out. And he refused to say, I mean, Andrei Alexandrescu refused to say, I believe that D is a, a good candidate but for that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would have thought D if it was more common. Uh, I mentioned again yesterday that I added D in some advanced course in, in, at the Technion, but I'm not sure they kept the slides even. But it, it, and it came in a, in a natural way when we talked in programming languages about interfaces like Java. So D has interface also uh, that you can see how it comes. I like D, I don't know enough of it, but uh, it's a good language. Maybe we should use it like basic, as a first language. Actually, this, this is a possibility. Okay, if they let me. <laughs> <laughs> or if I open my own school. Okay, anything? Thank you very much. <laughs>